Hello everyone, my name is Xin Wu Bruce Wu. I'm a postdoc researcher working at Arizona State University. The topic of my presentation is the characterization and calibration of volume to capacity ratio in volume function on freeways based on Q analysis approach. This research is supported by Maricopa Association of Governments, especially the large scale Phoenix Metropolitan Regional Network and the traffic speed and volume data sets. There are three important keywords in this title. The first is the volume delay function. The second is the V over C ratio. And third is the Q analysis approach. Volume delay function have been used as the building blocks of a static traffic assignment and capture the congestion of the traffic systems. And the V over C ratio or volume over capacity ratio uh, is a kernel part of many volume delay functions. Uh, the Q analysis approach is very important. In this re research, we try to build the internal connection between the static volume delay functions and the q phenomena of the traffic dynamics. This research mainly focuses on the Bureau of Public Road Function, that is BPR function, with this formula. UF is the free flow speed, C is the capacity of the link, and alpha and beta are the uh, parameters to be calibrated. Uh, we have three important questions about the function. The first is uh, what's the meaning of the capacity in, in the VOC ratio. Uh, currently, automated capacity is widely used uh, is widely used in real world situation as uh, capacity uh, used for traffic assignment. Uh, automated, com automated capacity is usually equal level of service E. And the level of service F means the traffic system breaking down. The second question is what is the meaning of the VLC ratio in the BPR function? Many researchers already recognize the inconsistency between the speed volume fundamental diagram and the BPR function. The fundamental diagram is a parabolic U-shaped curves or scanners. And the BPR function is a monotonically decreasing function where V over C might be larger than one to express the oversaturated situation. Now we partition the VDF coordinate plane into three regimes. The regime A is observed the flow rate with the undersaturated state uh, of uh, V of C less than one and the interrupted free flow speed uh, with uh, U larger than UC. UC means speed at capacity. And regime B is also observed reduced flow rate with saturated state V over C less than one, but with uh, reduced speeds, which means U is less uh, speed at capacity. And the third one, which is the most uh, mysterious part of the function, which is uh, almost unobserved, in fact, this part means derived the demand volume with the uh, oversaturated state V of C larger than one with a uh, reduced uh, speed, U less than speed at speed, uh, speed at capacity, U less than speed at capacity. So the key problem of the BPR function calibration is to map the point M in the regime B to the point N in the regime C. In existing literature, there are some methods to achieve the mapping. The volume-based method directly reflects the point M to point N using V of C equals to one as pivot in a symmetric fashion. This is a volume-based method. The, se uh, the second is density-based method. The density-based method using K over K critical instead of uh, V over C, 
during the BPR function. This paper we propose a Q-based method. Firstly, we distinguish the concept of volume and demand, or Q demand. The VFC ratio in this paper is viewed as the demand of capacity. So the V of C larger than one directly implies the demand exceeds supply on the link. Okay, now we start to define the Q demand. The Q demand is defined based on a peak hour during a peak period or assignment period. Peak hour is the most congested hour during the assignment period. So the question is, why we need to define the peak hour? Firstly, peak hour is used to characterize the oversaturated state of the peak periods. Secondly, we will further use the peak hour to convert the hourly capacity to period capacities for static traffic assignment. This paper shows the difference between the proposed definition and the existing definition. In the highway capacity manual, volume-based peak hour is usually used, which is defined as the hour with the highest volume during the peak period. In our speed-based peak hour, we define the hour containing the lowest speed during the peak period. Then we can consider the peak hour from two aspects, demand side and the supply side. Uh, from the supply side, we still can use the automated capacity, that is level of service E, to describe the supply of the peak hour. However, we will use a different definition for the demand. In our paper, the demand is described using Q demand instead of the maximum volume during the peak period. The difference will also lead to different definition of the peak hour factor to convert the hourly capacities to period capacities. In this paper, we use a data-driven method to calibrate the fundamental diagram and uh, obtain four important parameters. We estimate uh, free flow speed, critical density, automated capacity, and speed at capacity. Uh, the details of the traffic stream model we used can be found in this link. Uh, based on this link, we can derive the automated capacity using the C and this formula. Now we start to define the Q demand. In this figure, we can find the following important things. The first is a peak hour, which is the hour with the lowest speed. The second is the speed at capacity. To cut and generate a congestion period, which is a yellow area. From T0 to T1. During the congestion period, the level of service is E, right? Because uh, in this area, the speed is less than the speed at capacity. And the T0 is the time where the Q appears because from the T0, the speed is lower than speed at capacity. And T1 is the time when the Q dissipates, dissipates. So the congestion period starts from T0 to T1, which, is contain, uh, which contains the peak hour. The volume within T0 and T1 is defined as the Q demand in this paper, okay? Okay, Q demand includes the discharge rate at a bottleneck and the vehicles in queue, as shown in the figure. The travelers might arrive at the link 
earlier than their preferred arrival time to avoid the peak congestion. The traveler also can pass through the link later than their preferred arrival time because of a queue delay. So DLC is larger than one when demand is larger than the supply. Further, we find that congestion period equals demand over the uh, average discharge rate during the congestion period, right? As the ultimate capacity is usually higher than the average discharge rate, then we have the D over C ratio is the lower bound of the congestion period. And uh, so now the D over C ratio have a physical meaning, physical meaning. We further ca ca uh, categorize the problem into two cases. The first is a uncongested case, and the second is a congested cases. Then uh, the speed at capacity is, if the speed at the capacity is lower than the minimum speed during the assignment period, then we can directly use the volume DH with, uh, within the peak hour as its demand. However, if the link is congested and the speed at capacity is higher than the minimum speed, then it will consider the Q demand here, D here, right? So this is the formula we are using. This is the overall process of our calibration. Starts from the time depend uh, volume and speed data, uh, with 15 minutes time steps. Uh, we at first calibrate the automated capacity using traffic flow models, and then we calibrate the peak hour factor based on our definition. Then we convert the hourly capacity using the peak hour factor to the period capacity for traffic assignment. Then we calibrate the demand over capacity or V over C ratio based on our definition. And then we can use adding a uh, co-fitting method to calibrate the BPR function. And using the calibrated up and beta, we can do the traffic assignment. And then we can do the uh, comparative analysis and the model val validation using our data and the assignment results. Uh, this is, is a system architecture from the data flow to the uh, calibration, calibration the traffic stream model, calibration capacity, calibration the peak hour factor and the VDF functions. And then we also have a code to validate the volume and the assignment volume and assigned speed, assignment speed. Uh, we calibrate the capacity for different facility types and area types and calibrate the period capacity for each assignment period. So this is the algorithm and the process of our uh, calibration process. Uh, furthermore, we at first calibrate, um, uh, uh, we will at first uh, uh, do the period-based calibration. And then second, uh, we also calibrate, uh, do the day-based day calibration. The former generates parameters period by period. And the second uh, one, we generate alpha and beta for the whole day. So we use a network provided by Mac to demonstrate our method. We have two data sets. Uh, used for the uh, test bed. The first one is a data set from free, free freeway management system. And the second one is from the hear data and reader data. We call it hear match data. During our calibration, we also incorporate some reference points to ensure the calibration res results are reasonable for practical uh, traffic assignment. And uh, these are the results. X axis is a V over C or D over C 
uh, ratio, y-axis is uh, speed. The blue curve here is uh, speed volume relationship in the traffic flow model. These are also results. X axis is the demand or the period volume, and uh, the y axis is the speed. Uh, we can say we use some reference points in the figures. Totally, uh, overall, the method can obtain some good results. Other comparison analysis between our method and other existing methods can be found in our paper. You can also find other potential benefits of our proposed method in our paper. Thanks for your attention. And if you have any question, please contact us. Thank you.